Hey guys, how you guys doing? Glad to see you're back. Thanks for checking out this video. Today we're going to talk about a compositor. That's what we're going to talk about. Before we start today's video, I'd like to take a minute to ask you to hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and the notification button. It only helps me out in the YouTube algorithm so other people can find this channel and enjoy the videos that I make as well. Also, if you could, please join the channel. It only helps me out to maintain this channel so that that way I can keep making these good videos for you and other people to watch. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, that's okay. There's no problem with that. You can always support me over at Buy Me A Coffee. There are three different tiers you can choose from over there and or you can just donate over there if you want a one-time donation. But either way, you could buy me a coffee. The links are in the description down below. Let's go ahead and take a look at today's video. Okay, now to clarify a compositor. Well, what is it? Well, a lot of people are not really sure exactly of what the compositor is and that's what we're here to talk about because i posted a video the other day about how to enable vsync using your compositor because it's in your compositor uh now somebody said hey you know wouldn't it be great if you did a video on actual compositors because i don't know if it's that they didn't know or maybe you know there's not a lot of other people that have done them before so i took the request to heart and so that's what i'm doing this is definitely a subscriber suggested video. And in the world of your graphical environment that you see whenever you log into Linux, you've got your login manager that you use to log in. Then you get into your desktop environment. And at the core of all of that is your display server. And the display server basically is what interacts between the kernel and your graphical card hardware to actually draw all of the commands from the keyboard mouse and applications and display it on your monitor into the different forms that you see whether it's a uh desktop you know wallpaper with the panel the bar all that stuff there your login desktop or maybe just an open window of an application like vlc or whatever your display server does all of that. Now, what it uses is a very important tool to do that. And that's what gives it, I guess, like the real estate on the map as to where things are going to go, what they're going to do, how they're going to interact and be displayed. And that is your compositor. Now, the compositor is kind of like the artist uh, of drawing the windows. And in the, the beauty of Linux is that you could have many different forms of desktop environments. Uh, you can have a different actual display server. There's two. You've got X11 and Wayland that's out there. Wayland's build the successor to X11. Uh, the difference is that Wayland, as a uh, display server, actually has the window manager, the actual compositor, and the desktop environment all baked into one. Whereas X11 is more modular, meaning that you can plug and replace, you know, different aspects of it. You can like from different monitors, I mean, uh, compositors from KWIN to PyCom to Compton to Compiz to whichever. There's several different kinds out there. Now, Wayland, of course, is still in its infancy, so to speak, and has a lot of work to be done along with Sway, that's another one out there. And so what, 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 what's happening is, is as they get more mature and they grow more, you'll see them become more than likely a lot more modular. If not, then you'll at least have more different variants or like distros that you find in Linux. So that being said, that's a new, a whole nother topic that, 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 to talk about. And we can certainly talk about that later, but right now, the compositor for X11 is what we're talking about. And in that, with that compositor, you can find many, many different things that you can do. You can make your windows and the way that they manage and appear so sexy. Uh, it takes a little bit of work. You got to do a configuration file. And uh, in doing so, uh, you learn the basics of what the compositor is and it helps you out. So that's a brief explanation on what 
the compositor is and its direct relation to the display server. Understanding the compositor, right? One may ask, well, how many compositors does Linux have? Well, it's Linux. So you're certainly not stuck with just one compositor. No, there's several out there. And some of them are combinations of where they're a window manager and a compositor all in one. Uh, and then there are other ones that are just like separate. They're the window manager and they're the compositor. Uh, but you have a standalone compositors and that's what we're looking at right now are standalone ones. Now, in the standalone realm, there's five top ones that are used. And the one that I think that is used above and beyond the most is PyCom. And then there is Compton. Uh, PyCom is a fork of Compton. Uh, Compton in the old days was used to do like Compiz, which is another uh, type of uh, set of tools that you could put into Compton. And it made like the desktop cube effect and the, 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 the magic lamp windows that would like, you know, be like a magic lamp sucking in uh, all different, you know, animations and stuff that you could do with things. It was the beginning of the introduction of animation into the actual window environment. And so uh, PyCom got forked uh, from Compton and it added some animations, but more beauty like transparency and blur in that kind of stuff you could do that with comp is too but not to the degree or to the finesse quality that you find in in pycom pycom is by far and above way better now so you have pycom and compton and then of course you've got comp is then you've got x comp manager and then you have unagi uh which is uh used uh it's a lightweight one and it's used in in like elementary OS, those kind of things. And then you have uh, Cairo Com Composite Man yeah, Cairo Composite Manager or CCS CCM. And uh, it's another one that, that has a lot of like shadows, transparency, that kind of stuff in it. So uh, there's a lot of them out there that do a lot similar to PyCom, but I, I just like PyCom. PyCom is one that I'm most familiar with because it was a first fork of the old comp is and Compton. So I kind of, you know, gravitated towards that one, I stuck with it, got in my lane, stayed there. But there's many more you can play with, obviously. You can certainly plug and play them as you want. You know, it's up to you. That's the glory of the X11 display server, that you can do that. You can add different aspects of different things that work better for you. Whereas Waylon, like I said, they're pretty much so all melded into one. And they're set up as that. Now, let's... To find your compositor and to to do cool things with it, like adjust the transparency, the blur, that kind of stuff, it requires you to kind of go into a dot file, config file, and do some editing of it. And so where is that at? So we'll go ahead and take a look and find that for you here in just a second and, uh, and show you my configuration file. Okay, so here I opened my file managers you can see for those of you that are like newer to linux then you're wondering well, where are your dot files all i see is documents downloads music pictures port, port master all that good stuff well all you have to do is hit Control h and it shows your actual dot files in dolphin uh on the right hand side there's like a hamburger menu you click on it and you can see where it says uh, show hidden files or in known file manager all those they have that where if you go into you know into the hamburger menu it'll say show the hidden files sometimes you can even right click on it somewhere in the window and it'll say show hidden files and so you want to tick that on and then all of a sudden all of your dot files that start with dot config dot electron dot gnu pg dot local all those will show up and you'll be able to see them now the configuration file for PyCom, in my instance, yours may be in a little bit of a different location. It's nothing that you couldn't resolve by doing a Google search or maybe just, you know, finding out what compositor it is that you have in there and just searching your file directory that way. But either way, mine is located in the .config file, as most usually are. In i3, it's in the actual i3 folder, okay? And it's right here, pycom.conf. So now, if we click on that and open it, 
you're going to get it to open in in text editor. Uh, you can click on it, or if you have like Vim or Nano or whatever you want to use, you can certainly open up a terminal, type in, you know, sudo nano forward dash home, forward slash home, forward slash Alex, forward slash dot config, forward slash i3, forward slash pycom conf, or whatever path it is to to your actual file, wherever it's located at on your system. So, and you can usually find that out right up here. That'll tell you exactly where you're at. So, if you're wondering. So now, me, I have Kate installed. I'm just going to open it real quickly with Kate, so that that way you can see what it looks like. The body of this consists of shadows, fading, transparency and opacity, background blurring, and global settings. All of this, and here in global settings is where you can find right here the VSync to turn on VSync uh, or turn it off. Now, this is what is you could use to make your desktop have some animations and look sexy. As you can see, the blurring is in, a, in, in, in effect here where you can see my wallpaper through the background here. Uh, let's see, let's open up another wall, uh, another window and you'll see that's my wallpaper right there. I mean, another desktop. There's my wallpaper right there. Now, if you go and you see that it's bleeding through, that's a little transparency. Now, as far as shadows, shadows will be in like the border screen here that you can see there. Uh, you can turn it on, off, whatever. You can actually have a, uh, like a radius to it, which has got a small radius to it. So it's kind of like a blurred type shadow. Uh, you have, you know, you can offset it. You can do different colors, like you make the shadow blue, you make it green, you can make it whatever you know I, you know you, whatever you want to well i don't know about whatever color i think if you put a color in there yeah you would do like a hex value color you know so you can put put a hex value color on i believe in there oh no 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 sorry it's one zero to one so you'd untick this sorry you would untick uncomment it and then you'd put a one there to turn it on so that's how that works. I thought maybe you might be able to uh, to put in a hex value color, but you cannot. So there's that. Now, for fading, of course, now that is where you can actually... Now with fading, you can take a look at it and you can see that that will cause your windows to fade in and out and also transition between uh, different uh, uh, desktops or virtual desktops. Like if I open a terminal, see how it kind of faded in and when I close it, it goes away. And when I switch from a desktop to another desktop, see how it kind of fades in from the back and forth? It's kind of sexy. That's kind of sexy. I, I, I dig that. I, and, of course, you could switch the speed right here. Like uh, for fading in, give 0 0.3 to 0 0.1 or, you know, longer. And then, of course, 0 0.05 is a little bit longer in fading out. So you get that slow fade away. And then uh, you can adjust that. Now, as far as your transparency and opacity, which we discussed out earlier, it was already enabled. You can see this is where you're at. You can have inactive opacity, this frame opacity, menu opacity, which that's not always so so good to turn on. I mean, you get a little bit by 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 nature, but to turn it on where it's really o o opaque is kind of like floating words. It can be it can be ugly, so I wouldn't suggest doing that. But either way, there's different settings that you can play with in here for opacity that will help you. Uh, they could they, they could help you make it look sexier. Like one of them right here that's kind of cool is the dim inactive windows. So it makes them kind of like dim away. If you have multiple windows open, two different windows open, one will be brightly focused, the other one will be dim, so you know exactly which one you're on. So if you if you have some visionary problems or something like that, uh, then that could certainly help define for like a high contrast value. Uh, but either way, that that is really 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 nice. It's 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 really nice. And then background blurring, of course, background blurring is is where you can make it look blurry like a frosted glass or something like that. Me, I'm not so much into that. So I, I don't really have it enabled. But if you do like blur, then you can certainly go ahead and you can enable it through here. 
Now, then the next section that you have is the general settings section. And with that section, you could uh, like enable a daemon. Uh, you can uh, also do your back end. You can change it from GLX to the X renderer, which uh, you can do that. Also, if you have like uh, Optimum uh, install, which is a, like a hybrid graphics uh, 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 hardware, um, like, a, you know, laptop or whatever uh, right here you can enable that as well uh, v-sync as i talked about earlier and also i did a whole video on that uh d bus uh you could also uh mark the the focus uh window when uh i'm not sure what that is what that value is i i just not realize that um weird uh anyhow you could uh that's true i'm not sure what that does um but either way, that's there. Uh, you could also Google a lot of this stuff to find out. Also go to the wiki itself. That'll give you a lot of um, uh, insight as to what you could add or, or change on here as well. You could also do rounded corners here. You could also detect the, the client opacity, refresh rate. You can it, Here it's set to zero um, or 60, which your monitor is usually at 60, so I don't know why they have it at zero. But either way, um, there's that. Uh, you could uh, try fooling around with that, which I'll probably play with that a little bit later on. And then, of course, there's other, you know, to repaint at most one every refresh rate or whatever. So you could actually tell it when to repaint or refresh, so to, so to speak, the actual amount of timing and delay that it takes. There's tons of other things in here that you can actually do. A lot of it tells you about it here, you know. So just you can go in here, you can fool around, you can play with it, you know, and learn what things do and make everything super duper sexy. But my PSA to you is this. If and before you do decide to play with this, make a backup of your pycom.conf or your compton.conf or whatever dot com file that you're playing with and you should do this with any dot files that you're playing with make a backup of it then play with it so that that way if you bork it you can always just delete the one that's borked re re reapply the the new one by just renaming it to the pycom.conf or whatever and then uh reload your win or your uh operating system and you're good to go and so uh, that that is uh, word from the wise to the to the new people to do that because uh, having been that guy that didn't do that, yeah, and I don't know of any veteran out there that hasn't made that mistake. They forgot to or they thought they did or whatever. But either way, it just wasn't never done, and that's a whole lot of headache because it usually will require you reinstalling everything and starting from scratch. So. Either way, that is a look at compositors, what they do, what they're capable of, kind of how they work in the tool chain the, or the, being the tool that they are. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you have played around with these and you've done some things with it, hey, leave a comment down below. Also, just comment. If you got a suggestion that you want me to do, take a look at, or you know, maybe a video you'd like me to make for you, then hey, by all means, leave a comment down below. Either way, you guys keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay blessed and have a great day. And I will see you in the next video.